So right now we're managing user sessions on our own by setting the login key to true, which you can see here on a successful login and removing the key on a logout. So we'll be expanding the role of sessions in a future video, which can be complicated. So let's proactively refactor our code now to use a nice extension for managing sessions. And the extension that we're going to be using is called Flask Login. It's a small extension, yet it's packed with a ton of power. So let's go ahead and start by installing the dependency. So we can activate our virtual environment. Click install Flask Login. Let's make sure we grab the version 0.2.11. And then let's add it to our requirements file. So pip freeze requirements. TXT. Okay, now let's just add the basic configuration. So within the project directory, we want to go ahead and update the under under init file. So this file right here. And for the sake of time, let me go ahead and grab this code from the repository. So if you go to discoverflask.com project okay so what's new well first we are creating an instance of the login manager and then we're registering the login manager with our flask application object and then down here we are defining the login view so that's the view that handles our user authentication. And finally, this decorator here registers the load user function with Flask login. So after a user logs in, we grab the user info from Postgres based on the user ID, and then we store that data in the session cookie. So put another way, this function load user just loads a user from the database and stores the info in the session. So again, this is the most basic configuration for Flask login, and make sure you check the official documentation for additional configuration options. Okay, so next we need to update the login view function. And again, that's going to be in the user's blueprint, views.py. So it's this function here. And it's important to note that Flask login does not handle authentication. So right now, we're handling authentication here by verifying that the user exists in the database and that the password is correct. So once the user is authenticated, we want Flask login to take over by handling the session management piece. So let's update the login view and use the login user function to manage the session cookie associated with the login use, logged in user. So we just say login user, and then we want to pass it the user. So that's it. Now we want to go ahead and update the imports. So from flask.extension.login, want to import login user now let's just go ahead and comment out the old means of managing sessions we'll come back to this in just a second okay so let's do a quick test now and just see what happens so let's fire up the server python run.py Try and log in. Okay, so we got this error here. The user object has no attribute is active. So let's take a closer look at the login user function documentation for Flask login. I have it pulled up here. So you can see here that there are a few parameters that we can change. Let's take note of this force parameter. So if the user is inactive, setting this to true will log them in regardless, and it defaults to false. 
So what that means is, is that since we are not indicating in our models that a user is active, then we need to set this parameter to true to force the login. Or alternatively, alternatively we can update our user model, which Flask Login recommends. So let's go with that route. And actually, if you dig further into the Flask Login docs, you'll actually find that it requires a user model to have four properties, is authenticated, is active, is anonymous, and get ID. So let's go ahead and add those methods. And I believe there's an example on here somewhere. Yeah, again, is authenticated, is active, is anonymous, and get ID. Make sure you read this section here, just so you can get a little bit more information. So let's turn back to the repository here, and I'll just go ahead and grab those methods real quick. So models.py, and where are the methods here? It's also worth noting that Flask login has a user mixin that provides the default implementation for these methods. And this is ap applicable in most situations, including ours. However, since I like to be a bit more explicit, let's go ahead and stick with using just these methods here. Okay, again, let's uh, try testing this out. Server's still running. Let's try logging in again. So you are logged in, you need to log in first. So this looks like a user is not being properly redirected after they are successfully logged in. So let's turn to the views in the home blueprint and see exactly what's happening. Because if you remember from our user views, after a successful login occurs, then they are redirected to home.home. .home. The first home is the blueprint, the second home is the view function. So home, views, and then there's the view function. So the problem is actually with the login required decorator. Since we're no longer setting that key of logged in to true in the section object, which we were doing here, the current logic in this login required decorator won't work because it's looking for that key. Fortunately though, Flask Login has a built-in login required decorator. So let's go ahead and add that import from flask.extension.login. Let's go ahead and import login required. And this decorator is going to work the same as before. So if someone tries to access a protected route and is not logged in, the user is intercepted by Flask login, and the user is then routed to the login page. So we can go ahead and get rid of this helper function now. We can actually clean up some of our imports. So let's go ahead and test this again. So admin, admin. Looks good. Let's go ahead and log out. And I thought that logout function wasn't, or that logout wasn't actually going to work, since that's wrapped in the old decorator. But it did. But let's go ahead and update it anyway, since we need to. So if we go back to our views.py, you can see that the logout view function is decorated with the login required. So let's go ahead and, and remove that. Actually, now that I think about it, this will still work. It's just not going to remove the user from the session, which is obviously a problem. Okay, so we can get rid of func tools. And let's go ahead. We also need to update that view function. So we can use the method logout user. And that's provided by Flask login. So this logs out the user and cleans up the session cookie. And I need to add, add that to the imports, logout, user. Okay, let's see, what don't we need? We don't need the session. Okay, 
All right, so let's test this out again. Just to make sure I didn't break anything. Cool, it looks good. All right, so what are we missing at this point? Unit testing. Let's see what happens when we run our tests. So test.py. Okay, we're getting two failures, which we'll address next time. So try to challenge yourself at updating the tests on your own. Think of any additional test cases that should be implemented as well. And I'm happy to provide feedback if you attempt this on your own. And you can just email me at michael at realpython.com. All right, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.